Hello engineers, welcome to this video for Prompt Geek. Do you want to create amazing AI art but don't know where to start? You're probably struggling with the complex tools and technical settings perhaps. As a beginner, it can feel almost impossible to get good results from Stable Diffusion. Well, I've got great news for you. There's a brand new Stable Diffusion interface called Focus, or is it Focus? <laughs> Either way, it makes generating incredible images with SDXL totally beginner-friendly. Created by Ilya Zvil, the mastermind behind ControlNet, Focus completely automates the technical stuff and gets you set up with SDXL faster than ever before. You don't need any prior experience no more pulling your hair out over complicated parameters. I'm going to show you how you can get this set up in just a few clicks. So if you're a beginner looking to get into AI art, this video will get you started fast. No more struggling. Just watch this and then get creating. To download Focus, I'm going to stop calling it Focus now because it's going to probably start to wind everybody up. <laughs> but to download Focus, you need to go to this GitHub page here for Ilias Veal. I've put the link in the description down below. If you scroll down, it shows you how simple the interface really is. You've got your generation, you've got your prompt, and then you get going. But of course, there is the ability to change settings. You can go to advanced. The idea is that this makes stable diffusion much more like a mid-journey kind of experience. To download it, just scroll down here to the download page. It is Windows at the moment only, and more features will be added, I'm pretty certain. We just need to click here to download it. We want to create a folder for our AI on the root of our hard drive, so in my case it's C. I've got this one here called AI folder where I stick all of my AI stuff, and I'm going to create a new folder in here, which I will call Focus. <laughs> and I'm going to save the file in here like that. Now it is a bit of a hefty file, and when you launch it, it's going to be downloading SDXL Base and the SDXL Refiner for you. Now Focus will automatically set up that model and set up the Refiner so that it will work out of the box. But of course, downloading those will take a bit of time. Now, after the long wait for it to be downloaded, we of course go to our folder where we just saved it, focus, and now we need to unzip this. This does come down in a 7-zip format, so you may have to install the 7-zip extractor, but that's free to do, and I can put the link in the description down below for you. So a right-click, we're going to extract this, and we want to extract here. With that extracted, we can now, of course, delete the 7-zip, because we don't need to take up another 1.6 gigs of our disk space for no reason, so that 7-zip can go. And now we have Focus installed. Now, before you go and hit the run.bat, very quickly and importantly want to point out, if this is your first time ever using Stable Diffusion, and you haven't ever installed any of the other apps that are out there, then you can just hit run.mat and it will automatically install this SDXL base model and refiner model for you to be able to use. Those are quite large. It will take a while to download them. If, however, you were already using something like Stay What If Using Automatic 11.11 and have already downloaded the SDXL models, you can actually copy those and put them in the folder now before you run the app to avoid having to re-download them again. And as I already have these installed, I'm going to copy them over and I'll just show you where to put them now. So I'm in my Stable Diffusion Models folder and I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna find the SDXL Base and the SDXL Refiner. I'm just going to Control C to copy those. I'm gonna go back to the Focus folder. We open up Focus, we go into Models, into Checkpoints, and we paste them here. Now I've copied these over, we go back to the main focus folder, and then we can hit this run.bat. As I said, if you haven't got those models, don't worry. It will automatically install them when you run this file. So we double click, and it's going to install any independencies that it requires. And you can see that it's now installed and ready to go. If we minimize that, this is how simple focus actually looks. It really is very basic, but the point is, is that it takes away a lot of the work that you need to do in order to get a decent image. All I have to do is type in my prompt here. 
And for the prompt, we've gone with high fashion photography of a beautiful woman with a tall stature, donned designer apparel striking a dynamic pose, full body against a stark white backdrop, with bounce light from above, shot on Ari Alexa 65 with 50mm lens and Technicolor effect, in style of James Bidgood. We then just need to hit Generate. And now we can see that it is starting to build up that image. We've got that preview pop up here. Let's just start working through the steps. It's also worth pointing out that because Focus is built specifically for the SDXL model, it has a very strong advantage over Automatic 11.11 and Comfy UI in how it actually uses SDXL correctly. So we're getting SDXL and the refiner working properly together using this UI, which means that we will get better and more accurate results from the refiner as a result of it. Right, so we have our first generations with this app, and do you know what? They look pretty decent. Now, obviously, the faces need fixing, but as a first generation without changing any settings, it's not too bad. I will point out, though, that it hasn't listened to my prompt all that closely, has it? And we can see here that they're wearing designer apparel, of course, and it does look very high fashion, but we did say against the stark white background, we haven't really got that. I guess I would probably need to add a bit of emphasis to this white background. It is a brand new UI, so there are going to be teething problems, and one of those is that in Automatic 11.11, there are a lot of nice shortcuts that make things a lot faster for you in the terms of prompting. One of those is that you can highlight words in it and then just press Control up or down to increase or decrease the emphasis on it. That hasn't been implemented in this version yet, so you do have to do it manually by putting it inside of brackets. And I think that we'll probably have to use the old-fashioned way of doing multiple brackets to add emphasis rather than doing the numbers, but I might be proven wrong in that respect. And we could then go ahead and generate again, but this is where we can tweak some of those settings. We can go into the advanced settings here. And while you may be thinking to yourself, if I hit advanced, then why not just use automatic 11.11? Because surely having to do all of that stuff defeats the purpose of it. But actually the UI on this is really nice. Here we can control the aspect ratios of the image that we're creating with just a simple menu. All of these aspect ratios are actually optimized for the SDXR model as well. You can choose performance mode, either speed or quality. You can increase or decrease the number of images that you create. And you can, of course, include negative prompts too. You just need to put them here. Another really great tab on here is the image style tab. And if you look, it has actually got a huge list of predefined styles for you to be able to actually apply to your images. And so we can go here and choose ads fashion editorial. Go back to our generator settings. We can leave this where it is. That's fine by me. What we might do is emphasize quality to try and improve on the faces and we will reduce this to one on the image number as well, because we will have slower generations in this mode. But it's a very streamlined approach. And like I said, this is a very new user interface for stable diffusion. There will, of course, be changes made to this from Ilias Veal. I'm sure that we will probably see a fix faces option on here soon enough as well. And maybe the ability to add different models too. So let's close the advanced options. Now we've selected those. And let's try this again now with the emphasis there added to the backdrop. And you can see from our result here that um, yes, the face is still not perfect, but in terms of the actual composition of this image, the style, the lighting, it is a lot higher quality than the previous two generations. Now, until Face Restore is implemented here or some form of in-painting, which I'm sure is in the works, what we can do is put some negative prompts in here, one of them being ugly there and deformed. What we can also do in our prompt is we can actually change this from being full body to being upper body. This way, the shot will be closer to our subject 
and then there'll be more resolution for the AI to as you create a better looking face. We can of course also increase the resolution on here as well, using one of the other aspect ratios. The let's create another image now and see how that looks. I'm going to actually put this back to speed for this. How I'm going to increase the iterations to four and let's generate those images and you can get a better idea of what you can expect. And now you can see our results from this and you can see that while far from perfect, they are markedly improved on the last images. And I was also running this at speed performance rather than quality. So we could have probably even upped it even further, but these look pretty damn decent. They're not perfect. Like I said, you can see here this one, the hand is definitely off. The face is slightly off, but we are getting some pretty decent results from Stable Diffusion SDXL without in-painting and without the use of Face Restore or anything like that. And like I said, this is a brand new UI, so I'm pretty certain there will be more and more tools added in a user-friendly way. And if you wanted to learn how I came up with this prompt down below, there is a specific formula that I use, and I talk all about that in the video just linked in the card up above. So if you want to learn how to create amazing photorealistic images in Stable Diffusion, you can watch the video and download my free ebook, Creating Photorealistic Images with AI. The book is fully available. You can go ahead and download it over on Gumroad and just start building out your own images. And when you do, please do share those images over on Reddit or link to them in the comments down below for me to check out because I'd love to see what you've been able to do with the information and research that I've done. All I would like from you is that you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if you can spare $2 for the book towards my coffee fund, please do so. Otherwise, in here where it says name a fair price, just pop zero and click I want this, and you'll get the book completely for free. I really don't mind as long as you enjoy it and that you find it useful. That's all that matters to me. Now, of course, you don't need to just do realistic images with SDXL. It is very good at all sorts of different styles. And you've got all of these here. You can click on them and prompt for that particular style and get all of these very impressive results out of this UI without having to worry about all of the technical elements. And while I showed you there that you can get some really realistic results by having a very well structured prompt, because of the way image styles work here, if you wanted to go for something less realistic, you're going for a particular art style, your prompt doesn't have to be as detailed because these image styles will actually fill in a lot of the prompt in for you too. As you can see here, I just typed a white knight standing guard at the entrance of a magical tower at night time. And look at the result, obviously using this image style there of Psy Fantasy Art. And to show you just how effective this is, let's just choose a different style here. Let's go with Art Style Impressionist. And we'll generate the exact same prompt. There, as you can see, we've got the same prompt using a different image style, a very different result that definitely looks like an impressionist painting. Let's even test that with one of these, a futuristic retro cyberpunk look. And there we've got another very different result using that very same prompt that looks, again, very high quality. It's worth pointing out that if you want to find your beautiful generations, your SDXL generations, go to your focus folder, outputs, and we'll have it all there categorized by date for you. So for beginners and those who just want to create cool images and aren't too worried about the technical aspects behind all of this, Focus is the perfect UI to be using. It does, however, of course, lack the fine detailed controls and the extensions that the other UIs have. But that is, of course, the point, right? If you want to, of course, move into the more technical aspects of AI art generation, I am working on a full guide to Automatic 11.11 that will take you from installation to what all of the tools do, how they work, and I am aiming to launch that at the end of next week. So please do make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can be kept up to date with all of the latest videos. And until then, see you next time, Prompt Engineers.